So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation and for organizing this very nice event in this beautiful place. So uh, our uh, so uh, today I will uh, uh, explain to our uh, recent work with Boris Dubrovin, Si Qi Liu, and uh, You Jin Zhang. Um, so our uh, the, the the theme of our study is about uh, uh, topology of MGN bar and uh, into the system. Uh, so I will first explain what, what is uh, what do we study uh, uh, in the left hand side. We are interested in uh, the so called cohomological field theory. So I first recall uh, what is MGN bar is the Deline Manford moduli space of uh, stable algebraic curves of genus G with n distinct mark point. Uh, so on MGN bar, there are some uh, natural uh, cohomology classes. One is Psi class, and uh, uh, there are also lambda class. So these Psi classes, uh, they are a degree two cohomology class. And this lambda class are degree two J. So J from uh, zero, one. So what we are interested uh, is this uh, uh, Hodge integrals. Uh, so these are some integrals over MGN bar of these cohomological uh, classes. It's a 3G, uh, so the complex dimension. So these uh, uh, integrals are some just some rational numbers. And uh, they vanish, oh, sorry. They vanish unless the degree dimension counting holds true. So it's, a, uh, I, I will count the complex degree. So we are interested in, in these numbers. Uh, let me give you some example. So th these examples are some first uh, numbers computed um, uh, maybe uh, 40 or uh, 50 years ago. So for example, these are some uh, lambda class integrals. So when you, um, when you see these numbers, of course, uh, since we are talking about also some correspondence, uh, when you look at Bernoulli numbers, immediately you will uh, uh, reflect some uh, uh, matrix integrals. So, um, but of course, the, the, this relationship is, uh, is to be discovered. So these are Bernoulli numbers.
So th this is the, uh, about the uh, left-hand side about topology of MG bar. Uh, MG bar, we, we want to study this uh, Hodge integrals. So on the right-hand side, uh, uh, it's about uh, the problem jumps. Normal form of PDEs. So these are uh, partial differential equations of, of this form. And so on. So epsilon will track the uh, number of derivatives in X. So th these are PDEs we are interested. And uh, um, uh, what we have in 2014 uh, with Boris Dubrovin, uh, Sichiru, and Yujin Zhang is we start from any uh, rank one cohomological field theory. Or if you are familiar with the uh, language of Fermi's manifold, we only consider in this talk the, the one-dimensional Fermi's manifold, the, the simplest case. So uh, start from uh, any rank one uh, cohomology field theory, uh, we construct a PD of this form, and it is integrable. So here you get uh, integral PD, we, we call it Hodge hierarchy. So I want to explain um, sometimes called Hodge hierarchy of a point, the simplest case. So I want to explain actually that there is a correspondence between this um, construction. So from uh, any cohomological field theory, we get uh, an integral hierarchy, and the other on the other side, we can classify all integral system of certain form of this dubrovin jones normal form such that it has a tau function. And then you, you find our, uh, our conjecture is they, are, they all come from cohomological field theory and it is one one correspondence. So l l let me explain what precisely uh, is this correspondence. So, uh, so our main conjecture So conjecture um, so rank one commodity field theories modulo uh, as some isomorphism of these theories, so they are uh, one one and on, on two correspondence to uh, tau symmetric Hamtonian system. of the Brown Jones normal form. Modulo, uh, there is a natural group action called the Mura group. So, uh, and this correspondence are explicitly uh, revealed in uh, uh, what I will explain uh, some uh, parameters. So we call it normal form. So um, according to Zograph and Manning, And the Telemann. So the, the left hand side, this uh, classification of rank one cohomology field theories are parameterized by the so called turn character of the Hodge vector bundle over MGM bar. So the complete classification is given by um, character of Hodge, uh, of the Hodge vector bundle. So this sigma um, one, sigma three, sigma five, uh, they are some arbitrary parameters. And uh, uh, so th there's no even part because the, it's the, according to Manford's relation, the even component of chain character vanish. 
Uh, so on the, so the, this sigma i, they are arbitrary complex parameters. So this is classification of the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, uh, what we classify is this tau symmetric Hamiltonians, and it gives you also a sequen sequence of uh, uh, constant parameters, uh, tau symmetric Hamiltonian system. Also give you a sequence of constant parameters. And uh, this conjecture uh, precisely means there is a one-one correspondence between these two sets of parameters. So I've, I'll give you the, the first few, uh, so the, the actually the, the correspondence, the, this uh, relationship is a tri triangular transformation. So sigma one equals uh, two to the power five, five uh, three to the power two, and five to the power one as A1. And I also uh, already copied the, uh, Sigma three and uh, A1, A2, Sigma five, uh, it's uh, also, so this map is invertible because it's tri triangular. Uh, so we could uh, verify this conjecture up to very high uh, genus like genus uh, six or seven. It means, uh, so here A1 appears in genus one and, uh, and so on. So A A AG appears in genus G. Uh, but so far, we haven't proved this conjecture yet. So what are the A's? So what was our A's? These are the invariants of the uh, tau symmetric Hamiltonian modulo Mura group. So, the, so, so in this classification of all uh, interval system which has a tau structure and has a Hamiltonian structure, uh, the classification is, uh, is given by the, 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 uh, the canonical form of this classification is given by a sequence of constant parameters. So, so if this constant, these parameters are different, they will not, be, they will be murally uh, not equivalent. And if they are uh, the, the same, so they are, are murally equivalent. And uh, so we consider that this is all tautometric Hamiltonian. I, I, I give you now KDV. So, so let, let, let's look at. Uh, excuse. Uh, ah. So let, let's now look at K KDV. It's not very efficient, but so I, I will simply. So examples. So because of the correspondence now, it's uh, uh, so between cohomology field theory and Hodge hierarchy, or it's, uh, so in the case that A, uh, all sigma equals zero, uh, what you have according to a written conjecture and conservative proof, here the Hodge hierarchy is KDV. So in the case sigma i equals 2i minus, one, uh, minus 2 factorial um, s to the power 2i minus 1. In this case, according to Alexander Burlak uh, in uh, 2013, uh, this gives you uh, uh, the, the corresponding Hodge hierarchy have this explicit form. So here, your k is the k derivative of u. So this hierarchy is also, uh, this equation is also very famous. So here is kdv. And this one is intermediate long wave. So, and uh, now I give you another example. 
Um, so before this example, I want to give a remark that, so here when you take sigma i, uh, so sorry, here's 2i minus one. If you take sigma 2i minus one equals this factorial, and you use the correspondence between um, turn character and the turn uh, polynomial, it's, uh, uh, so turn class and turn components of turn character, the relationship is like sure function, uh, symmetric functions, uh, uh, sure functions and elementary uh, symmetric functions. Uh, then, so uh, from this you will find actually um, under this substitution, this uh, our sum. It becomes actually a term polynomial. Which is uh, one plus lambda one s plus lambda g as the power g. So yeah, it's an easy exercise. Uh, okay, so the next ex uh, example is, is what we are going to prove today is this, when sigma i, uh, sigma 2i minus one equals 2i minus two factorial, one minus uh, four to the power i and uh, two s 2i minus one. So in this case, the corresponding in, uh, Hodge hierarchy. So first we conjectured in, in 2014 is this. So when you expand in epsilon, uh, you find it is always in Dubrovin Jones normal form. Just do a Taylor expansion. So th this equation is also very famous. It is this discrete KDB or Volterra lattice. So th this is what we are going to prove today. Let's call it the theorem A. So you can also use this uh, uh, relationship between symmetric, uh, between sure functions and uh, elementary symmetric functions. Uh, then you'll find that uh, under this substitution, the chain character will become, in this case, under this substitution becomes uh, pro products of three uh, chain polynomials. So this is what we are going to prove today. So now I will explain uh, uh, um, some, uh, uh, I will introduce some notations. So for any cohomology class, uh, for any cohomology class beta, we introduce a generating series of integrals. So because there are too many numbers to study, we make a generating series. So these t's are indeterminate. Okay, so um, for all the possible uh, cohomology field theory, we introduced uh, this uh, notation. So we call this uh, genus G free energy of Hodge integrals. It involves uh, all cohomology field theory because this sigma uh, are arbitrary. Um, 
We also make a, a generating series uh, for, for this uh, genus. So we call it free energy, and the, the exponential is called the partition function of Hodge integrals. So our first proposition is, uh, is a, a quite simple exercise. If you want to compute, for example, genus zero, it, it is already uh, well known. So I will give you the explicit expression of genus uh, zero Hodge free energy for our arbitrary sigma. Actually, it's easy to see the, the Hodge bundle vanish uh, is trivial for this case. So um, actually, the dependence of H0 in sigma, it, it, there's no sigma dependence for H0. Um, okay. So lemma or proposition, uh, H0 T sigma has the explicit expression. This is solved actually uh, by uh, De Bruyne, and uh, he uses the, uh, in already uh, in 1990, 90, uh, beginning of 1990s, and uh, he uses simply uh, uh, the idea of Riemann, uh, the so-called holograph transformation. So to solve uh, genus zero uh, equation, or the, um, uh, I say uh, PDEs of hydrodynamic type, you get this explicit expression of H0. And uh, let's make a definition. So this is uh, already done many years. So we define VT equals DT zero square H0. Uh, so you see that there's uh, no sigma dependence because uh, the triviality of the Hodge bundle. Uh, so if we define uh, Vt as the second derivative of H0, we will get also an explicit series. We just do the derivatives. So all these ins are non-negative integers. If you expand, it start from T0 and so on. So you will see the T0 start from one plus so on, so it's invertible. And uh, so, and uh, what we know is that this V satisfies the Riemann hierarchy, so or this person is KDV, or uh, in this case, Burgers. Uh, X. Okay. So here, our uh, uh, in this notation, x is t zero. Okay. So th this is the genus zero part is always uh, easy. Uh, our theorem in two thousand fourteen says. Uh, H1, we also have an explicit expression. So H1 is an infinite series of P and sigma. So the explicit expression is if, you, if we use V to represent uh, H1, then this infinite series becomes just uh, a simple function. So th this is explicit expression of H1. So this uh, pattern goes on for any genus, for, an, uh, for genus, uh, any genus bigger than or equal to uh, two. Uh, what happens is there exists capital HG, which depends only on 3G minus, uh, minus one uh, 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 independent variables. Usually, people call it 3G minus, uh, minus 2 lemma. Such that, so th these are some uh, simple functions that are rational in Z1 and uh, polynomial 
in all other variables, let's see, z2, z3, g minus two, sigma one to sigma g, such that our uh, free energy is an infinite uh, series, can be expressed simply by substitute in this capital HG, uh, our uh, fun uh, infinite series V. Okay, so we substitute Z by V, and Z1 by dV dt0, and uh, uh, Z2 d square V dt0 square, and so on until uh, 3G minus 2 V d t0 3G minus 2, and the uh, sigma we keep is polynomial dependence in sigma. Actually, you can also control the degree of, of uh, of sigma by some uh, homogeneity, so it's, it's easy. And uh, the, the proof, uh, what we use is we, we use the browning johns loop equation and the faber pan pan equation. So, proof. Plus dz loop equation. Okay. So it's not, not our, so may, maybe I will give you just the first few terms of H2. It's give you a, just an impression of what is going on. This, the, the coefficients are some very uh, uh, nice numbers. They are actually relates to these Hodge integrals, but uh, I, 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 will, I will not explain. There's explicit expression of this coefficient, all the coefficients in terms of the so-called primitive Hodge integrals. So the finite terms, because it's, uh, the, there is a degree control, you can always prove it has only finite terms, but I just, uh, it's too long, so i write the last term. Uh, say, say again? Should be, uh, so by definition, HG is an infinite series of Hodge integrals, right? So I, I give uh, uh, maybe already. Uh, so, so the HG by definition is uh, contains all uh, possible. So sorry. So all possible Hodge integrals. Um, ah, maybe I use. You see, so HG by definition HG is the generating series of all Hodge integrals you can consider. So here's for any cohomology class beta, and I, for uh, this um, all cohomology field theory, it's given by, this is a very big class, and this class contains uh, infinite, many parameter, uh, infinite many parameters and all chain components, uh, of chain, uh, components of chain characters. So it's a very huge uh, generating series, and uh, our theorem says this huge Generating series are actually just a rational function of some simple uh, of of some other generating series, of uh, explicit series actually. So this can be expressed always by the, this uh, uh, very simple series. Okay. So th this happens already for gomov witten uh, case. So now we also ge we generalize it to uh, to the Hodge case. Okay. Now let's look at the. Uh, GOE side. So the, all these are about uh, uh, topology of MGM bar and the uh, inverse system. So now we move to this uh, uh, matrix integrals. So what, what we want to see is, it turns out that this Hodge integrals have some relationship with, with matrix integrals. Uh, actually, it is uh, the, the, our method to prove uh, theorem A. It's already... Uh, Disappear. So, um, okay. Now let, let's look at uh, GOE psi. Maybe I keep this. So, in GOE side, what we are interested. Uh, are also some numbers. So these are uh, 
counting of ribbon graphs. So with summation over all ribbon graphs of uh, genus G with uh, K vertices of valences uh, I1 to IK. So, uh, so the, the useful counting is always uh, uh, up to, so uh, divide by this symmetry factor. Um, so for example, I, I, uh, so these are some numbers computed uh, in 1986 by Harder and Zagir. So it means for, if you have one vertex, uh, so um, here is valence is two, uh, four, six, eight, and genus zero, one, two, three. So uh, at genus zero, you get Cartan numbers, and uh, for higher genus, you get some uh, generalized Cartan numbers. And uh, so when K, so fix K, fix the number of vertices. When K equals one, uh, the, there is a closed formula by Harris Zagir. Uh, K equals two. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, closed formula means not closed formula of, of these numbers, but closed formula for generating series of these numbers. Uh, by Shapirov and the Morozov. So here's 86. Here's, uh, uh, actually I forgot. <laughs> And k uh, bigger than or equal to three uh, by Dubrovin and myself using uh, toda lattice. So we, we get uh, for fixed k some ex explicit formula for this generating series. And uh, then I, when we get this generating series, we, we compute many numbers and um, uh, we found in, in literature, people are also interested, uh, uh, quite interested in computing uh, these uh, ribbon graphs for uh, even valences only. So then we want to understand why even valences are uh, interesting. So uh, then it turns out that it only, it, it, because we, um, there is another pr approach of computing these uh, GOE correlators called the Dubrovin-Zhang approach. So we consider, uh, uh, Gromov-Witten invariants of uh, the Riemann sphere, and uh, we can, it, so the, the genus zero part gives you a Fabris manifold. And uh, from this Fabris manifold, we can compute uh, free energies. And in, in this uh, approach of Dubrovin-Zhang, there's also some key functions similar with this, uh, our uh, little v, we just uh, erase here. So uh, this function turns out to be simple when uh, uh, only even valences survive. Um, so then we, uh, I, I, I'm asking, I was asking Boris, so what is the inverse hierarchy for only even valences uh, partition function? He told me discrete KDV. I said, I never learned this. And uh, he said it was already pointed out in 1990 by Witten. So, and then I look at Witten's paper, because Witten's paper, I usually only start in the, the first part, the topology, the topology of MGM bar part. I, I, I didn't look at the next part. But then I look at, <laughs> precisely as Boris said, it is discrete KDV. Then it, it is very nice, because why it is nice? So, uh, so if we only consider even valences, uh, it is nice because, so what we just conjecture, our theorem A, previously it was a conjecture, in uh, uh, 2014. It was conjectured the cubic Hodge integral. The generating series, the, the partition function of cubic Hodge integrals of this, the corresponding partition function is a tau function of Volterra lattice or discrete KDV. And now the, Boris told me for if there's only even valences, uh, this GOE even. Let me define what is GOE even. 
So I will make a generating series of the following form. It's a very nice generating series. Um, of course, you can also uh, uh, derive this from um, matrix integrals. I, I just give you the explicit expression in terms of ribbon graphs. So it's very explicit, so very beautiful. And so it's x squared over two epsilon squared log x minus three over two plus minus log x, this is genus zero part plus, uh, genus, uh, zero, uh, genus one part plus, uh, theta prime minus one plus sum epsilon uh, 2g minus two, the Bernoulli numbers uh, appear again. And also with this expression, now nowadays in algebraic geometry, people call it gap phenomenon, but it's revealed from matrix integrals in a very natural, very nice way. So X is usually we call Duft coupling constant. So in, 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 in the sense that we always consider finite size of uh, this uh, Hermitian matrices and uh, its uh, uh, partition function, but I haven't finished. So this is Duft coupling constant. So, and then plus sum uh, all genera absolute 2G minus two, sum summation over all vertices, summation over all valences, but it will only consider even. So a G 2I1, 2IK, SI1, SIK, X to the power two minus two G minus K minus Okay, so we have this uh, generating series and uh, it, it is known by a written. He said this generating series, which is a generating series of X and S. So written says it is a tau function of discrete KDV or Volterra lattice. Then it is natural, very natural to to, to go on, so then the problem is just, is there any, uh, what is the precise relationship between these two partition functions? So instead of proving some partition function is a tau function of some hierarchy, which is extremely difficult, we, we, we compute it up to genus 10, or uh, sorry, up to genus seven, many, many uh, huge terms. We, we now we consider to prove it, uh, to prove two partition functions equal. This becomes, uh, uh, doable. And then it's also very nice because uh, the next day Boris is going to, to Rome for, for uh, some uh, administrative stuff. And, uh, and then he computed uh, uh, the GOE part on, in the train and I, I computed the uh, Hodge part. Uh, also, it's also very interesting that the, 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 the day after he went to Rome, I, I also went to, for some visa application, and then I also went to Rome, and also on the train I compute the Hodge part. And the next thing is to compute, uh, to, to compare, uh, to match Hodge part and the uh, GOE part, they are indeed equal. So, um, th this uh, is, uh, 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 it turns out to be true. So, I, 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 because of the time I only, uh, I will write down the uh, precise correspondence. So theorem A prime. So now we have two partition function. We want to find if there are some relation. So under the substitution, so T i, so uh, yeah, it's it's um, some mathematics on the train. So k to the power i plus one. It's not um, uh, easy actually, this uh, uh, substitution, but it, it is only this, and there is no, uh, no other choice. So, so if there is correspondence, it must be this. And of course we, we give, uh, uh, everything becomes rigorous if you consider it is uh, the, uh, indeed a series, the, the log, the partition function of even, GOE even, is in this ring. So, uh, epsilon square is in x minus one, s epsilon square. Okay, so uh, under the substitution of uh, ind independent variables, 
which valid in this ring is a direct check. The uh, partition function of uh, GOE uh, correlators of even valences Uh, simply equals to, uh, uh, there's a very simple expression. Product of two hot partitions. So we first put this as a conjecture and then we proved uh, together with Sichi Liu and Yu Jin Zhang. Uh, I will briefly ma mention uh, how do we prove this. Because if you uh, expand both sides, you take log of this uh, uh, identity. If you, so, so here A is a simple quadratic function. So there's no other choice. It, it must have this, and this uh, factor turns out to be crucial uh, in our later generalization of uh, all these two uh, cubic Hodge integrals satisfy uh, local Calabial conditions. So uh, theorem A prime implies theorem A. And uh, so in, in this identity, if you take logarithm of both sides and uh, look at the genus expansion, you compare genus by genus, of, of course, we, we can do up to genus three, for example. But then it's uh, uh, impossible to continue genus by genus to, to prove this. It, it, it becomes uh, the same as our previous verification of uh, up to genus seven, theorem A. So impossible. But this identity, uh, so, what is the idea of proof? Let me write down here. Proof. So, what we did is, so first, for uh, GOE partition function with even valences, so in literature you, you find people make a table and write GOE and Versoro, it says true. GOE, uh, GOE even valences, Versoro, not true, so it means it does not have Versora constraints. But what we did is we first introduced uh, a new partition function, uniquely de determined by this very simple uh, uh, equation. So we define z tilde from this uh, identity. And you can find that, that it's easy to see that there is a unique z tilde. And um, after you define this, we call it modified GOE partition function with even valences. After introducing z tilde, you find z tilde has a nice Versoro. So satisfy Versoro constraints. Sorry? Oh, that, that is, sorry, GUE even, yeah. So satisfy their sorrow. They're very regular, their sorrow constraints. And then what we did is simply, um, you see, with, with this substitution, you can compare this Z2 and Z Hodge if you want to prove this. And then you, you, you can show um, after this, actually, with this factor, times Z Hodge equals z uh, So it is equivalent to say, uh, to, to prove this. And in order to prove this, uh, we will show also the Hodge side using faber pan pan equation, the Hodge side also satisfied their sorrow. But now the factor is important. So e to the a uh, divided by epsilon square. Only with this, it satisfies a nice their sorrow. 
uh, this theta prime is a little bit, uh, so sometimes it's very, uh, yeah, sometimes theta prime is uh, crucial in, in many studies, but in this study, theta prime, uh, theta prime minus one is not very uh, crucial because, um, yeah, so after this times the Hodge. So the conjecture, the, the, uh, uh, the statement we are going to prove is equivalent to this equals Z2. And uh, then uh, uh, Z two already satisfies Verisorial constraints, and uh, you, you can see uh, Z Hodge using uh, using Faber Pantheon equation. You can also find Z Hodge also satisfy uh, times this factor after uh, after multiplying by this factor also satisfy Verisorial constraints, and you compare they have the same Verisorial constraints. Um, and however, this Verisorial constraint, the, the solution to this. What is Verisorg? The Verisorg constraints are infinite set of linear equations. But you can see in this case, differently from uh, uh, KDV case, the Verisorg constraints do not have a, solu a unique solution. However, uh, however, since uh, this important structure, the, all the free energies, this uh, uh, HG, they have a, they are uh, infinite uh, uh, series, uh, uh, infinite power power series, and this infinite power series they are also rational or polynomials of some some functions. You use this, they, we call it jet space uh, jet jet rep representation. You use jet representation uh, plus general zero, so they're zero, so they have the same same they're zero plus uh, jet jet. Representation, and also you can compare the general zero coincide. Also, I didn't say that actually this uh, uh, log of this uh, uh, GUE partition function, the, the free energy of GUE partition uh, 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 of these uh, uh, correlators, they they also have the jet representation for higher genus. So both sides have jet representation. And also we can compare the gene zero part indeed coincide and plus the same Verisorg constraints, they produce a unique solution. And uh, this finishes the proof of the theorem A prime and theorem A prime implies theorem A. So I stop here. Okay, let's think of speaker. Okay, quick question. So on the right hand side, you have the, 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 the partition function of our Gaussian unitary ensemble, no? Only for even time is a solution of total lattice, if I understand. Yeah, a tau uh, function of total lattice. Tau, tau function. On the right hand side, you're saying this is uh, Volterra. Uh, uh, no, not total, uh, uh, even, even is the uh, Volterra, the Volterra. Witten, Witten's important observation, he says, this is the tau function of Volterra. He didn't say it's total, he said Volterra. It's from easy even total, no? So you take uh, only it's all, David's it's also, Yeah, if you use reduction, it's also a tau function of total, yes. Mm -hmm. But the, the right hand side, you say this is Volterra. The uh, Oj, the Oj, what? The Oj I, I mean, uh, Volterra and this is KDB is the, is the, the same equation. I, I wrote this. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. This is what I'm saying, Volterra, or uh, discrete KDB. So, but this is a product of two. A uh, product of, yeah. It's, uh, the the conjecture statement is a product of two partition functions. And each so, of them is a Volterra, so satisfy Volterra. Each of them satisfy Volterra. Yeah, it's, okay. it's because um, for, for input hierarchy, you can, uh, so th th there are uh, two natural, naturally defined tau functions. Mm -hmm. So th they are, so what we are seeing is they are tau function, not a solution. So, so you, you gave a solution, and uh, you, you, you can define tau structure, so it's tau function. It's very uh, uh, so it, it means it means for for example you can define u equals uh, lambda some shift operator uh, times uh, uh, yeah this I didn't remember carefully. So uh, of log z, this gives you a solution. After, so it's a uh, um, so between the solution of discrete KDV and tau function, there is a relationship. So for any fixed solution, you can define two different tau functions. So it's uh, it given from this. Uh, so uh, 
both the left-hand side and right-hand side are tau function of discrete KDV. Any more question? Okay, then uh, let's thank our speaker again.